Welcome back again to the channel. It's been a while I didn't present any video in English and this time we'll discuss about the coaches watch inequality. So in this video we are going to prove the coaches watch inequality by using the property of projection. Projection of a vector onto another vector. So let me remind you, if we have two vectors, u and v, we can project one vector, one vector onto the other, let's say like this, to get a vector that we call it as the projection of u to v. Okay. And the formula for this projection you can find in any standard textbook on the neural algebra or even on calculus. Yeah. So the projection of u to v is first basically it is a vector which is a multiple of v. So for example if the u is going there, then the projection from u to v is gonna be a vector with direction is opposite to v, so then in general it is just a multiple of v, so some scalar times v, and the scalar can be obtained by taking the dot product of u and v, and then we divide by the the length of v squared. So that's the projection. Okay. Now notice that, uh, okay, so before we prove the Cauchy inequality, so let me remind you what is the statement. The Cauchy-Swart inequality, that if u and v are vectors in our n, then we have the dot product of u and v is less or equal to the length of u times the length of v. So this is the coaches what inequality in terms of uh, vectors and this is exactly the same as the normal coaches what that you know so if you want to see that so let's the let's call the the components of u to be u1 u2 and so on and the same as well for v so therefore on the left hand side so if we rewrite this on the left hand side we have the sum of ui vi from i equals 1 to n. Okay? And on the right hand side, remember that the length of u is just the square root of sum of ui squared. Okay? And then that one is also the sum of i equals 1 to n vi squared. Okay. So this is the normal Cauchy-Swart that you probably know in terms of summation and the product of sequence, two sequence of numbers. Okay. So, okay, this is the statement that we are going to prove and I mentioned earlier that we are going to prove it using the property of projection. Okay. So, at least in, in general, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if we can apply this in general, but at least it works for our field. The problem is that for general n, I don't know if we have the same situation as vectors in our n, but I think it works as well. So just let me know uh, your opinion about this. So. The one that we are going to use is that if we have a vector u and a vector v, then we have a This is what made me uncomfortable if the proof is work as well in our end. But just, just let's see what's going on. Okay. Okay, so uh, we know by theta the angle between u and v, and then from geometric picture we can see that the length of projection vector 
is exactly the length of u times cosine of theta. The length of u cosine. So, okay, maybe let's keep that, keep the statement, okay. So now, let's replace this projection of u onto v by this expression. So the length of this expression, since this is a scalar, let me just take the absolute value of this times the length of v. So, the left hand side becomes the absolute value of u times v v squared and the length of v that is exactly the length of this vector okay meanwhile on the right hand side we have it's equal to u cosine theta since the value of cosine is less or equal to 1 so this is less or equal to q but this can be simplified, we can cancel one length of v on the top and one length of the v on the bottom. Okay? So then we have this over that, less or equal to this. So if we multiply both sides with the length of v, then we have the absolute value of u dot v is less or equal to the length of u times the length of v. Okay? But this guy is definitely greater or equal to the dot product of u and v, since this value can be negative. So if it is positive, it's exactly the same as this one, but if it is negative, that is certainly less than the absolute value of u and v. So in the end, we have exactly what we are looking for, the Cauchy-Schwab inequality, 